Hey there guys, it's Amit, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and welcome to lesson 49 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about pure functions. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also, be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. All right then guys, so welcome back to lesson 49. So in this lesson, we're going to learn all about pure functions. What are they and how should we use them? We'll also then look at impure functions in this lesson, as well as the idea of side effects. So let's start with pure functions. So a pure function is a function that for some given arguments always produces the same outcome and one that has no side effects. Side effects are basically when a function changes something outside of itself. Let's make sense of all this with an example. First, let's go ahead and create our function and we'll call this sum. It'll take two parameters. We'll call those n1 and n2. And this will basically return console.log n1 plus n2. So now if we go ahead and invoke this function, so we'll say five and two, and let's do it one more time. We'll say sum, let's go for 147. Let's save. In the console, we get seven and 147. So this is an example of a pure function. Why? Because it doesn't change anything outside of the function. That is, there are no side effects and it will always return the same thing given these particular values. So here, if I refresh, we'll always get seven and 147. So to clarify then, a pure function is a function. It could be any type of function. Here we're using an arrow function that does the following two things. Number one, it will always return the same thing given specific arguments. So here, if we're using the arguments five and two, this function will always return the number seven. It will never return eight or six or anything else. And secondly, this function doesn't change anything outside of this function. For example, if we had a, uh, if we had a variable, let's just say let X be sign the value of hello, Inside this function, we're not doing something such as taking this X variable and changing it to goodbye. This arrow function is pure because it doesn't change anything outside of itself. So that's what makes something a pure function. Now the opposite of a pure function, as you probably guessed, is an impure function. Let's take a look at some examples of functions that would be considered impure functions. So here, we'll create a new arrow function. We'll call this random num. It will take the parameter num and here we're simply going to return console.log num plus math.random. And now down here, let's go ahead and invoke this function and supply a value for our num parameter. So we'll say, let's just go for the number five. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. And now in the console, we get this number. Now this number will always be a different number. So if we go ahead and save, as you can see, we're always getting something different. So this is an example of an impure function because given this same argument, it always returns something different. Another example of an impure function would be one that changes something outside of itself. Now this could be something as trivial as the variable example we just looked at, where we had our X variable, which could be changed from hello to goodbye, but it could also be something like an HTTP request. We'll be looking at that later. Let's take a look at another example of what would be an impure function. So here then we have an initial result variable and then we're console logging before function. So before we run this add nums function, this is what the value of our init result was. So at this stage, this would of course be zero. Next, we have our function called add nums. We're taking n1 and n2 as parameters. We create a const called sum. And inside sum, we have the value of n1 plus n2. And then, which is what makes this an impure function, we're saying our variable of init result, and we're assigning this to sum. And then finally, we're returning this sum value. So here then, this function is an impure function because it's changing a value outside of itself and the value it's changing is this variable. So finally down here, we say console.log and then we invoke the function with some arguments. And then finally, we console log after function and then the value of our variable. So let's go ahead and save, let's see what we get. Okay, so this console log up here then, before we run our function, our init result has a value of zero. This is when we invoke our function, so five plus five. And then finally, this last console log here is the new value of our variable. As you can see, before the function call, it was zero. And then after the function call, it's now 10. So once again, this is an example of an impure function. 
Okay, so that's all about what pure functions are and impure functions, but the next obvious question is, what should we use when we write in JavaScript code? Should we go for pure functions or impure functions? Well, generally, it's best to use pure functions, and that's because they're more predictable. There's no harm or worry that if someone was to invoke the pure function, there would be any changes to any of the code, and also, the expected outcome is always the same. However, impure functions aren't all bad, and the fact is, it's almost impossible to completely ignore them. For example, as mentioned earlier, we may have a function that sends some data to the server via an HTTP request. So sometimes, impure functions are a necessary part of our code. If we know that we have a function that is impure, just make sure to name the function accordingly so that it's absolutely clear to the person invoking it exactly what this function will do. Okay, so that's all about pure functions. Let's go ahead and summarize. So pure functions are those that, given a certain input, will always return the same thing, and ones that don't have any side effects. That is to say, they don't change anything outside of that function. And impure functions are basically the opposite to pure functions. They don't always return the same outcome, so they always produce something different, or they change something outside of the function. For example here, our addNums function changed our variable. So guys, that's all about pure functions. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about recursion, an advanced function concept that many people struggle with. But don't worry, we're going to break it down. It's going to be nice and simple. So as always, be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you on the next one.